Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing data arrays in Google Sheets. An array is a row of data with columns, uh, similar to the table that we have on screen right here. Basically this is a bunch of arrays. Um, and our demonstration today is going to culminate in us using an array in order to look up uh, the country of each name in this data set. So let's jump into an array. So basically, um, when you enter data into a cell in a spreadsheet, you're creating an array. And when you add a row um, to that uh, range, you're adding an array on top of an array. So right here, we have row two is an array, row one is an array, row one and two is an array. Um, so there are going to be some circumstances where you're potentially going to want to create your own uh, sets of data, your own arrays, your own tables, uh, without having to move columns around and, and disrupt your data sets. Um, you know, my perspective and what my videos are primarily focusing on is um, using your data skills in order to manage circumstances and to construct pipelines so that you spend less time cleaning up data and more time thinking about how to make decisions with data. So one tool that I think is really helpful is understanding uh, how an array is constructed. So in order to uh, create, your own array, create your own array, you will use an equal sign and then use a curly bracket and then you'll use commas and semicolons in order to structure your data. So what we're gonna do is we are going to recreate um, our first row in the data set, and then we're going to create the second row underneath it. So to begin, we're going to write name, and then we're gonna use a comma, and then we're going to enter in country. And the reason that I entered in a comma like that is because I want this data to appear next to each other. So in your array, you have two primary delimiters, uh, the comma and the semicolon. The comma will put your data entry next to each other, while the semicolon will put it on top of each other. So we're going to use these two uh, symbols in order to um, create uh, our array. So you can see we've now recreated the first column. And if I wanted to, or the first row, and if I wanted to add the second row, I'm going to use a semicolon because I want to put it underneath uh, row one. And then I'm going to enter in uh, my remaining values. And now you can see we've recreated that array over here. But the difference is, is that if I delete uh, the contents of cell A1, it only changes A1. Whereas if I delete the value or the contents of E1, it removes all of the data. Um, so basically we have um, all of our data existing in one cell. Now, a few notes that I wanna make here is um, you'll see that all of my text, name, country, amount, mark, country, these values are all, um, and I just noticed that this should be US, my bad. Um, these values are all strings. That means that they're text. And we want those to appear as text, so we use double quotes. Number 12 is an integer. And if we put double quotes around it, it will appear as text. So one way to test this is you can use the isNumber function, and you'll see that we are getting true because that's a number. Now, if I go back in here and I add a double quote to it, you'll see it becomes false because it's now text. And you'll also notice that the alignment shifts from being to the right to the left of the cell. You wanna be very careful about your data formatting. Right now, it's, it's okay, but as you uh, continue your data journey, little things like this can become big problems, annoying problems, so uh, you just wanna be mindful of it. One other thing that I wanna call out is that arrays need to, um, have the same number of values in each row. So you'll notice that I've removed the uh, amount from row number two, and now we have these red lines showing up. When we hit enter here, we are getting an error message that is telling us that in array literal, an array literal 
who is missing values for one or more rows. Now I know it's weird that they use array literal two times right next to each other, but the most important part of this error message is that it's telling us we're missing values for at least one row, right? And the way that I think about this is it's kind of like if you're, you have a car and you're missing a wheel, your car is not able to run. Uh, that's the same thing with arrays. They just need to be balanced, right? So let's say hypothetically, we don't have an amount for this row. In order to balance out the uh, array, we're gonna put in two double quotes next to each other. And that is the symbol for null, which means nothing. And even though there is nothing in the amount column, something is there because we are saying we want a null value there. One thing to be careful with that is if you add a space, that will become a character. So you can see when I hit enter, we have a space in cell G2 so that my cursor can move left to right like that. You wanna be careful about that because again, as you continue your data journey, that value will show up as a space. The same way that if you put the letter M in there or the number one, that space appears as a character that computer programs will read in and it can cause problems down the line. And the best way to avoid them is to use the null character. Cool. So now that we have our foundation for how to construct arrays, we're gonna talk about how to restructure data uh, with the practical application that we're talking about here. So we kind of touched on where, um, you know, a, a function, a very popular function is VLOOKUP, right? Lots of people use it. Uh, index match is another way that people look up things. VLOOKUP is a little unforgiving in that, um, let's say that we did want to look up um, a name in this data table over here, right? So we, we highlight the entire thing and we want to use that name to get the country. We would not be able to do that because what is required in VLOOKUP is that the lookup value is in the first column of the range, right? And because mark is in the second column and all of the names are in the second column, we cannot look up the country names against those names. That's where using an array is going to become very impactful. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into this restructuring data tab so that we just kind of have a fresh place to play around. And we're going to use our curly brackets in order to reconstruct the data table that has the name as the first column and the country as the second column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my curly bracket and then I'm going to select column B. And then I'm going to use a comma because I want this data to appear next to it and I'm gonna do column A, and I'm gonna close my curly bracket. And now you can see we've restructured that data without changing the integrity of our data source. Uh, as I've discussed in my other videos, I am a, a huge proponent of creating destinations where data lives so that if you need to import data in or replace data or add data or remove data or whatever, your visualizations, your charts, your tables, don't get impacted by that. So if you hard code uh, data changes, it's going to make future adjustments more challenging. So leveraging something like a data array like this enables you to create a unique set of information that pulls from your primary data source, kind of like going to a well to get drinking water. So you could use this in your VLOOKUP, right? Like we could point to the restructuring data tab, but what I would recommend is nesting this within uh, your lookup. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to uh, use cell K2 to um, use an array within a lookup so that we can use names in order to get countries. So I'm gonna type in VLOOKUP and I'm going to select I2 because I want that to be where we enter our lookup key, our search key. And then our range is going to be an array formula. So I'm going to use a curly bracket. I'm gonna select column B, and then I'm gonna use a comma, and then I'm gonna select column A, and then I'm gonna use a comma, and then I'm going to include C through F just in case we wanna 
dynamically look at stuff, right? We don't have to like use another lookup in here. We now have the table in its entirety, but restructured so that name is now column one, country is column two. And then we're going to reference uh, column two because that's now where our country data exists, right? Column B is now column one, column A is now column two, and then all the other columns remain the same. We're gonna enter in false because it's not ordered. And now check it out. Now we're able to get the country names in here. So now I'm gonna use Molly because she is not in the United States. And you can see that it's now dynamically changing. Um, let's do Danny because he's Canada. So now you can see that we're able to reference that column in there. And now we can use name as the primary lookup for all this stuff, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this lookup here and I'm gonna now create a new tab for inventory. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna hit my equal sign, I'm gonna paste it in. And now instead of referencing the second column, I'm gonna reference column three because that's our month. And actually I'm gonna do column, uh, column four because I want that inventory, right? So now I'm gonna left align it just so that it's next to each other. And now what I have here is a nice little slicer that enables me to get the country and the inventory using the name as the lookup value. So in summary, data arrays, super impactful. I use them rather regularly because it enables me to uh, reference data sources within my workbook without having to change them. That means that I can set up pipelines to refresh my data when it updates, which enables me to automate stuff. If you're interested in learning more about data management tools, data strategies, and automation, please check out the other videos on my channel. I'm always interested in feedback and any notes anybody might have, so please use the comments section. And I, I hope you found this video helpful, and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your day.